Hi there. Let's see how well this young man does in speaking for me. I tried to teach him to wink a minute ago. Some of these things seem able to wink with their left eye, but not the right. Go figure. <laughs> well, it approaches it anyway. All right, the journal is called Pinning Down the Isness of Things. And it's from July 13, 2010, first of that day. Mayan Day 9, Rabbit or Star. Yeah, I know. What do rabbits and stars have in common? Well, click the link. Go look it up. Things fall away. Things change. This keeps happening. I've gotten down now to very few habitual things that I do. And I trust I don't do them just from habit, but from heart. That's where they arise, or they're supposed to. I suppose sometimes, especially considering my morning prayers or devotions, which are very short and abbreviated these days, Sometimes I begin speaking more from habit. I don't really know. I'll have to observe a little closer. I am eager to consecrate my day, you see. I've seen the great difference over the years that this makes, and I have no understanding for it, <laughs> no understanding to offer with that about how it works, what it does, or anything. I just know I have seen clearly that it does. It makes a difference. And I don't need to understand to reap benefit from that. It just is. Now, can you be uncurious like that about something? About something important to you? It's a good thing for its evidence you're out of the mind with it. Maybe you're in heart. Could be. Being out of mind, though, is such a relief. Mind wears me out with its constant activity. Always got to be going somewhere, mentally, that is. Doing something, always active. Never a moment's peace or just being. Just rest. Just like time and space go together, Stillness in both time and space is beneficial. One helps breathe the other, pulls it in. Actually, they're two sides of the same coin, but I don't want to go getting too esoteric or seemingly theoretical. Perhaps you can see, though, how both being in the now or coming to rest centered in time is like coming to rest in space, not bounding all around mentally, all over the place. Does that make sense? Heart sense to you? Remember to listen from heart. I don't say it so much to you anymore, as I've already done that quite a lot earlier on in the training, it turns out, that I offer here. Constant reminders can be both a blessing and a bane. I still require them or appreciate them, you know. My little statues that I placed all around still call me back to center when I encounter them moving through the house, and I appreciate the reminder. I use it, too, as a sort of feedback mechanism. They show me, objectively, my state. Do I just walk past in a hurry or distracted with my mind elsewhere? Do I neglect to pause and offer recognition to the light they represent, that they anchor? If I do that, I'm usually observing, so I see it happen. I note it. It helps me realize I'm not collected, not fully centered. Higher self uses it to help pull me back in. I'm not consciously doing this monitoring or observing. It just happens, and I watch that. 
Habits, perhaps, can be both blessing and bane, all depending. Are you in mind with them, or are you in heart? It seems that heart can have some habits also. I don't know, mind you. I'm just here working this out. This is how it seems to me now, anyway. That's what my journals are. Like, I'm a reporter from Upper Dimensions, looking down on what's happening and reporting what I see. It's a funny state to be in, for sure, this 3D-ness. It's rather bizarre, actually. Here we are, these gray cosmic light beings come down into this tiny, this limited manifestation. And then we get trapped in it. We thought that would never happen from our space there in higher consciousness. We couldn't imagine it. Yet we do get trapped into identifying with it. Then we're wandering a bit lost for a while. Could be a long while. Now we're found, though. Now we're found. We're all rising up, finally, back into that higher self that we are. We just forgot. We don't need to be taught anything, you know. That's why I so hesitate to speak sometimes. I'm so aware that you all really know this stuff. We've just done a mass forgetting. And that's fine. That was part of the show. This show wouldn't have happened if that hadn't been one of the major rules. It happened incrementally for the most part, this forgetting. We didn't lose it all at once. We slowly dove into it, this identifying with name and form. We can snap out of it rather quickly, though. Often, we'll find whole layers and levels of our delusion just falling away. We won't even necessarily know where they've gone, or why, or how. We'll just notice they're not there anymore. And that's a good sign, by the way. Don't fight it. You know, stepping out of the journal here, this incrementalism, we need to watch out for that. Those of you old enough, I want you to think back 10 years and now imagine yourself in front of the television watching a movie. And I want you to look at the limited or more limited number of commercials and break-ins that appeared for you then. Now, flash forward to right now. It's insane. You can't concentrate. You can't keep a storyline for anything. It's not even worth it watching the damn thing. They're training us into not being able to concentrate, to focus, my friends. Incrementalism. Little bit by little bit. You know, we don't count the seconds where year by year there's more commercials, less program. No little thing you can point to and say, hey, you shouldn't have done that. You've got to be alert to this. Be in heart. Okay, now back to the journal. All right, I was talking about uh, delusion falling away and, and how surprising that can be when we discover it. Uh, I won't say to offer gratitude for it because that's silly. You either will or you won't. Gratitude, the real thing, is from heart. It just arises. You all know that. You know the feeling. It's a beautiful energy. It's not something you have or you offer. Gratitude just flows. It expresses through you, whatever it is. I don't know. It's such a beautiful energy, though. And it's a hallmark of higher consciousness, too. You'll find it swimming there in the background of everything. Gratitude flowing. That's how I sign my emails. Gratitude abounds. Yep, it just is. Let's all start noticing this isness of things, the sacred things especially, 
have this quality. They just are. And that brings up my favorite saying again, or one of them. It is what it is. That says so much, really, but it will say different things to you depending on where you are in awareness when you look at it. It's a powerful phrase, has much to offer. I thought of closing by sharing my morning, morning consecration offerings with you. They're very short, but something said no, you'll have your own. The point isn't the words you know, the point is the energy. Are you flowing that way? Does consecration make sense to you? If it does, then you'll have your own way of doing it. It's okay, it's good, I think, to take a prayer or invocation or mantra you find that resonates with you and offer it, that's fine. One of the ones I offer daily is from the Syrian High Council. I found it in the last book of the Syrian Revelation, Revelations Trilogy by Patricia Corey. My sovereignty mantra is from there as well, and that's fine. Do what works for you, what calls out to your heart. That's the thing you know. Listen and live from the heart. No matter what you're doing or not doing, have an ear to your heart and be listening. Be aware in there. That's being heart-centered. And that turns your whole life into a meditation. And many of us do this already, I know. You're very good at it, too. Some could give me a few lessons, I assure you. I can feel that. The other prayer, and I don't like that word because it invokes the whole religious thing, and this is not that. <laughs> don't know what word I can use, though. This links me up directly with source. What do we call that? Anyway, the other one is something that flowed entirely from my heart, from my heart's communion with source. It is a simple offering of self, of all that entails, up to Prime Creator, my highest vision of God or of Source. It amounts in a reverse way to an invitation to Source to enter into every aspect of the being, the life that I am. That's the other side of the coin. It doesn't say that. That's just the return flow, the current of energy that flows. It has that action. It's very beautiful. Yes, it's a good idea I have found in the practice of it to make a direct link up with source, both morning and night, and heck, any other time you think of it, too. The sovereignty mantra is handy for that one. It fits any place, so I'll close with that. Two little lines. I am a sovereign being, exercising free will as I ascend the spiral of spirit. I intend that the higher purpose be served and that the light prevail. Just that. You can click on the transcript to get the words if you like. This announces to the cosmos, and in particular to any beings or entities, any thoughts or energies that may be intruding, the flow of your being, the way you choose to live your life and use your energy. I often say that and then invite any beings or energies not in complete 100% accord with it to vacate. Vamos! I send them away with spirit warrior escorts, or angels, whatever. I'm all for free will and everyone and everything getting to exercise that. About my particular space, however, I both have boundaries and the right to reign here. I exercise that right. It works for me. And have a great day. Mm-hmm. <laughs>